Hi, my name is James O'Keefe, Captain of the Massachusetts Pirate Party, and I'm joined today by uh, First Officer Steve and uh, 17th Pirate Party, 17th Middlesex um, State Representative Candidate, Joe Onorowski. How are the two of you? Doing good, Jamie. I am fantastic and glad. So, Joe, you had some good news for us. Uh, yes. So I am officially going to be on the ballot. Um, there was a little bit of snafu with some of the pages. We have to, we, we didn't cross our T's and dot our I's. Um, so we're going to get that done, but I have well more than enough. Thanks to the effort of all those who have been behind me. I appreciate everybody who's volunteered their time and, uh, no small part to Jamie who kicked me in the butt to get me going. Thank you, Jamie. And uh, we got the signatures. We've had a lot of great conversations with people. And um, I'm going to be on the ballot. I am another option for the American people, especially in the 17th Mail Sex District. <laughs> and, you know, even if I walk, even if I lose, if I walk away with getting them to Im implement some of our policies uh, and really shake the pillars of heaven. I will be really happy, but I'll be even more happy if I get at least 4% of the vote um, because that will make us, uh, that will make us an official party, correct? No, that's only no if longer. we get, if we ran a statewide candidate, would we get, and we got 3% of the vote. Okay. So we'll still be a designation, but you know what? I would be happy if I get 4% of the vote, but I mean, obviously I'm going to go and I'm going to campaign and I'm going to campaign uh, a lot of, the people who I've talked to uh, really don't even know who I'm running against. And this person's been in office for quite a while. Uh, Ms. Howard has been doing the job for a while, and there's a lot of people who don't even know who she is. So, so is, is this shaping up to be a two-way race? Um, as far as I know, there are no other candidates. Okay. Uh, but, you know, that's a good question that we uh, we didn't ask but as far as i know there's no one else in middlesex that i've heard of um i hope it's more than one and hope more than just me and howard but um so long story short uh there's we have more than enough to make sure that even if they can test us there's very low possibilities of them being able to take me off the ballot um and we're just going to make sure that that happens. But that being said, I'm filling out questionnaires. I'm trying to get endorsements. And uh, the next week, I plan on really hammering out every single endorsement I can get my hands on and try and solidify uh, my positioning, my stance, and post that. I, I know I got one done, and uh, there's quite a bit more to go. So, But I don't want to take up any more time. We have quite a quite a full docket today like we, we actually had to trim some of the fat of what we were talking about because there's just so much shenanigans all at once you know so jamie well i just wanted to to note uh, to give a thank you to the state elections division um some of the forms had not had the proper stamps from the municipality and they were nice enough to point those out, uh, did a count of how many signatures were, you know, he had, Joe had enough to get on the ballot. And it's just a matter of get, getting those back to the, you know, to the elections uh, at the town or city, and then be able to get those validated and back to them. Just as Joe noted to provide an extra cushion, but a good shout out to uh, state elections division for that meticulousness, um, as well as, of course, as always, the OCPF with their help because they're just excellent. Um, so other news that we have um, on our signal channel, there's been some discussion back and forth about um, different mesh technologies and specifically one that allows simple messages to be sent out over uh, a broader network and over large distances um, so that, for example, 
if there's a power outage, you can use one of these battery powered devices to send a message to somewhere that doesn't have a power outage and, and spread those out. Uh, so that MeshNet meeting, which is organized by Pirate Mickey, um, will be this Wednesday, May 22nd at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's at communitybridge.com slash town hall, and the access code is together. So if you are interested in this, the technology is, you know, generally less than $100. Uh, you can purchase these devices, download the firmware, and then start communicating with folks. Uh, I know I'm planning to be there, and hopefully others will will join us and come out for that. Certainly something that's in the uh, pirate bailiwick. Um, in terms of topics, um, we've got pretty much three to talk about. Um, Steve, did you want to give us an update about the, the latest going on with the attempt to silence TikTok? Yeah, sure. Um, so our, our federal government is unhappy with TikTok and I gather the the our you know the our congressional leaders feel that TikTok may pose a threat because they collect they might be collecting personal data about Americans. How totally unlike American social media companies. So you know they're they're um, this is from the Department of Siri. How do I get more young people to vote? So what the what Congress wants to do is essentially to ban TikTok, and it's it's really a half-ass ban. Uh, TikTok has about 150 million users in the United States, and what they're talking about is not, you know, stopping the service for existing users, but uh, requiring app stores in the United States to, um, you know, pull TikTok from their shelves, so to speak. Uh, presumably, you would still be able to get the app elsewhere, <laughs> but you know that's that's what it is um you know and they also have been you know asking requiring uh tick bite dance to de to font to basically sell tiktok uh to a u.s investor and um you know i my understanding is that this, this is you know sort of unconstitutional the company will not you know bite dance is not from my understanding, is not prepared to divest itself of TikTok. Um, it's been a very successful, you know, application platform for the company, and a lot of people use it. A lot of people like it. So, one of the, you know, sort of the latest bit of strong arm tactics to come out about this is um, now not in addition to sort of taking action against TikTok. Congress is now become interested in investigating any company that helps TikTok defend their rights, uh, defend their their right to to uh, to free speech in the United States. And you know the um, an example from TechDirt uh, talks about a trade group called NetChoice that represents you know a bunch of big tech companies, and you know they do some lobbying and that sort of stuff. Uh, it had TikTok as a member organization and uh, now lo no longer does because, you know, basically a few c people from Congress told NetChoice that, you know, if you don't uh, drop TikTok as a member, we're going to have it a congressional investigation of you. So it's sort of the federal government strong arming, um, you know, and basically trampling on freedom of association, which is another one of those pesky First Amendment rights. Um you know, in terms of, you know, this this does seem a little bit like uh, the McCarthyism of the 50s. You know, have you or have, you know, have you now or ever been a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> have you or have you ever helped TikTok? <laughs> um, but, you know, it's 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 a little disheartening and, you know, to see um, Congress stoop to, you know, frankly, such a low. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Steve. It's just a house of un-American activities uh, all over again. Yep. Um, if they, you know, they they won't stop at this group. They'll they'll go to other groups um, as a way of slowly pulling away support. 
But, you know, 150 million people use TikTok, so good luck with that. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, you had a, you had, a, you said there's something that we missed before, um, but Texas got its way with the Supreme Court, at least temporarily, right? Yeah, so another uh, freedom of speech issue with people just throwing out the Constitution, uh, Texas bans Pornhub. They're going to get rid of all the 304s out there, and they're going to protect their children by taking away all the sex and just giving them guns instead. Um, you know, because there's just so many guns in Texas. You know, Siri, and how do I get young people to turn out to vote? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, as far as like the whole Texas, the, they recently passed a thing where uh, Pornhub basically remove uh, access to Texas because they were trying to institute a very overbearing. Uh, beyond the just click I'm over 18, um, which obviously a lot of kids are like, oh, I'm just going to click over 18 because they have access to internet, um, which is kind of like an old school problem. But instead of dealing with it properly by parenting your kids, you're going to make the state take away access for everybody. And so it's a kind of a giant, giant mess going on. Um, and it's just one of those issues that I don't know. I don't even know where to begin with this because, you know, people are going to do and find a way to access that they're going after Pornhub, but they're not going after all the millions of other sites that have porn on, it. you know, it's not going to stop like, Porn from getting to the young kids, it's not even going to slow them down. So, yeah, uh, go ahead. Go, Steve. I was going to say, kids can be pretty creative. <laughs> well, what was it like 99% of the internet is for porn? I think there was a Muppet song, The Internet is Made for Porn. I think um, that was Broadway, but um, Broadway, yeah, I don't know if it's right, 99%, no, right. but yeah. So this... Yeah, no, no, I'm pulling, pulling that number out of my, <laughs> but yeah, but you get my point. Mm -hmm. Wasn't, isn't there another state uh, that went through something similar where Pornhub no longer does business? I want to say it's Utah, but I could be wrong, but it's another example of instituting, you know, really rigid uh, age verification requirements and, um, you know, the site operator just says, yeah, if you're in, if you're in this state, you're geo-blocked by, <laughs> use a VPN. <laughs> Aren't they trying to take away VPNs right now? Isn't that like a thing? I have not heard that. Um, in terms of corporate, corporate, you know, corporate America, uh, corporate America uses VPNs all over the place. Uh, if you were to allow, if you were to disallow that, you would, um, you know, that's that that's ba that would basically be an extension of the crypto wars. But you know, we, um, you know, the laws of math never uh, apparently stop three-letter government agencies from asking the asking the world to defy the laws of math. I mean, we're not saying that the people who are making these laws at this point really understand how the internet works. Thank God. But um, just saying that th another awesome thing coming out of Texas. So um, that being said, what are your thoughts, Jamie? I'm just amazed the Supreme Court didn't at least temporarily suspended. So wait, like is it's, this it's the, transparently First Amendment. <laughs> like, which Supreme Court is this? The Texas Supreme Court or the U.S. Supreme Court? I believe it's a U.S. Supreme Court. Oh Jesus, fucking! I got <laughs> well, nothing. I think one of the things. <laughs> one of the things is they're dealing with all the two A stuff right now, so there's only so much that that they can actually do, and with all these things popping up on as far as constitutionality 
you know, I, I'm sure eventually they'll take it up. But, you know, the, the government is slow and the courts are even slower. And I think I, I that's by design. I guess you're just going to have to make adult videos with uh, with with arms in them. <laughs> My stick figures are lovely, thank you. I yeah, I don't want to know about stick figure porn. Okay. So, um quick shout out to our uh fellow pirates in the European Union, especially um <clears throat> Uh, especially Pirate Party uh, MEP uh, Patrick Breyer, uh, who has asked the European Commission for an opinion on the decision of fr French computer game maker uh, Ubisoft uh, to basically make their computer game The Crew One unusable from April 2024. So like many games out there, um, it has a server component. It's not just what you run on your computer. And so they're going to shut down their servers on April 2024. And so he's attempting to stop that simply by um, seeing if this runs counter to uh, EU copyright law. Um, the questions he asks is, is this a breach of EU law? which limits does EU law generally place in computer game manufacturers when decommissioning previously sold computer games and which authorities are responsible for enforcing the regulations. So, you know, we've seen, we've seen this in a variety of ways where um, companies will just shut down their servers. They're not going to do that anymore. And you're, the money that you spent in essence becomes useless. Uh, you can't play the game anymore. Uh, or we've seen, you know, <clears throat> we've seen people try to resurrect old games and be able to um, replay those on new devices. And, you know, I know, I believe Nintendo has been against that. Um, so anyways, th thanks to uh, our, our, <clears throat> The pirates standing for all of us in the European Union, uh, in the European Parliament. Thoughts? Well, I'm interested to see where this goes, because if we're able to resurrect some old games, like there's some old games that were bought out by companies that were wildly popular in their day, but just got completely bought out and crushed and are being sat on. And I'm wondering if that's the case, if there is a limit to a limit to that, or if they actually win cases there, then we could possibly win cases here and it might be worth pursuing. And then some of the ideas of those games could be re-hashtagged, re-brought into new. One of my personal favorites, an old AOL game, uh, Dragon's Gate, which was an old text-based game, but if they were to bring back something like that, I know EA right now is like really holding on to that one, and um, but it was such an original game, and where they're struggling to find new creative ways of redo the gaming industry, and there's so many flops, being able to stop the, being able to put a statute of limitations on that. Uh, another one you said was Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo is famous for taking their game ideas and then just staying on them forever. Not wanting them to ever be reinvented and making it so that the only way you can get them is to go through them. Um, and so it's interesting to see what will happen with this. So all the love going out there, especially me being a hardcore gamer, you know, no, no shyness about being a gaming nerd there. Um, and I'm really hoping, it's one of the biggest reasons why I'm so against copyright law, is because it really just crushes the ideas. Um, you know, where the next great thing is going to be coming out, next great story, is generally just a tweaking of some of our older stories. 
Yeah, I mean, one of like if I I'm not familiar with European copyright law, but if this were to happen in the U.S., well, that you know that game that's quote unquote intellectual property, the copyrights in the game itself would um, be held by someone. Um, it would be an asset on someone's books, and it would sit there until the source code was so old that you know you wouldn't be able to compile and run it on anything. <laughs> um, I mean, it, copyright law I think would be a lot. I think the public would benefit if um, you know there were limitations on how long a non-practicing entity could hold it. You know, the non-practicing entity is someone who owns a copyright but doesn't do anything with it. They don't produce a good, they don't produce a service, they don't produce something that consumers can use, uh, even if there are consumers that want to use said thing. Um, you know, there there should be. I, I think that you know the people who you know who own them. Um, you know, should have a re requirement to, you know, at least make the stuff available or, you know, if not, uh, then it should revert to the public domain. Yeah, I'd love to see it open sourced. Oh, you don't want it anymore? Well, put all that code out there. Um, so the last thing we're just going to mention is uh, Warner Brothers, owner of, creator of or maybe not creator, funder of uh, many Lord of the Ring films, um, is thinking about coming out with a new film that unfortunately seems to cover or seems to overlap with what a fan film made in 2009. And uh, they that was up on YouTube. And they, Warner Brothers, in its infinite wisdom, decided to do a takedown notice of the fan film. Thankfully, fans uh, were not pleased at that and told Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers backtracked. And now the fan film is back up. Yay. Tip for, um, tip for movie producers. Fan films are generally produced by your, lowest, your most loyal fans. Uh, they are giving you free advertising <laughs> at the very least. Um, you know, and a person who sees a fan film uh, and likes it is probably interested in seeing, you know, what the, the original film that inspired it. Um, support your fans, please. Not only that, but like if somebody is going out of their way, investing so much of their time to make additional content for your world then that means that they are creating for you so don't don't like uh, what was the old saying um love what you got not what you want yeah or it you know at least consider the option of cutting a distribution deal with them they that makes them happy you can skim a little bit off the distribution that makes you happy everybody's happy <laughs> please support your fans yeah and with that uh we we love our fans if uh, you want to share a comment um please do um you can find us at masspirates.org and um Tell your friends about us uh, if you like what we say here, if you like uh, past pirate news episodes. And um, so, Joe, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to also add in, make sure you jump over to the U uh, EU pirates and show them some love and give them some support, especially with uh, this law over there. Go annoy their legislators uh, like we annoy ours here. And we're totally cool if you want to make fan films about us. We'd love it if you made Especially fan about, films about us. <laughs> Especially about Jamie. <laughs> so with that, uh, thank you very much for watching us. Um, we hope to see you next week. And uh, in the meantime, have a great time. Bye.